Hi, this is Dan Heisman, and we're continuing with our series of videos to help you improve your chess game. I get asked occasionally to do more videos for beginners. Uh, most of my videos are oriented toward, you know, mid-level players. Some would say lower mid-level players. Uh, certainly some of my videos are for higher mid-level players. I thought I'd do a video pretty much for, you know, not beginner beginners, like do you know how to move the pieces, but people that are, you know, rated below 1200, you know, where I get to go a little slower and explain things in detail. So if you're a higher rated player and you're looking for something challenging, this is probably not it. But uh, if you want to come along for the ride, well, we'll be glad to have you. I thought what I would do is do a kind of introductory beginners level at, uh, look at the fried liver attack. And a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about the fried liver attack. First of all, they think it's like an opening. Well, it occurs in the opening, but it's not an opening. It's a really the name of a variation, which is a trap in the two knights defense. And when I say it's a trap, it's not a normal opening that, you know, a grandmaster would play for black. It's what happens when you make a bad move and someone can take advantage of it. So let's take a look at how we get to go there. And we'll, again, we'll be going rather slow. We'll draw some lines, you know, that kind of fun stuff. So white plays e4. Okay, that's the most common beginner opening. It helps you castle kingside faster by giving your bishop a diagonal to go out. Let's your queen come out as well. People say, don't bring your queen out too early. Well, too early, yes, you shouldn't do anything too much. You shouldn't have too much air. You'll hyperventilate. Too much water, you'll drown. Bring out your queen too early is bad, but but actually you can bring out your queen per, pretty early. I mean, for instance, if white plays f3 and black plays e5 and white plays g4, then queen h4 is the fool's mate, and it's definitely not too early. It's just the right time to bring your queen out and checkmate white. So there's really no principle that doesn't that says don't bring your queen out too early. What you shouldn't do is bring your queen out where it can be attacked easily by the other pieces while they're developing. Attacking things with something worth less I call AWL. And doing AWL to develop a piece we call winning a tempo. So okay, so E4 opens up. Black plays E5 for the same reason. Opens up a diagonal for the bishop, opens up the line for the queen gets ready to castle really quickly. All right, we have a little principle in chess that says knights before bishops. Why knights before bishops? Well, a couple of reasons. One is knights are slower than bishops. So, you know, if you're going to attack on the middle or out on the other side of the board, bishops and queens and rooks can do it from all the way across the board. Knights can't. So knights before bishops. Also, this bishop has lots of interesting places to go in the opening. We're not quite sure yet which one we want to do. While knights generally have a best square, in this case, knight to f3 attacks d4 and e5, two central squares. If I play my knight to e2, I'm blocking my bishop and I'm only attacking one central square. If I play knight h3, my knight on the rim as future is dim. Knight f4 is not available. Knight g5 is guarded by the queen. So knight f3 is kind of the best square for the knight. If we give it to the engine, who right here doesn't have a database in him, he doesn't have an opening book, and we say, Mr. Stockfish, what's the best move if you don't know what to play here? Stockfish says, knight f3, best move, white's ahead by about, oh, about a quarter of a pawn, fifth of a pawn. We have this number over here in parentheses that the engine shows you, that's his evaluation of the position, roughly a fifth of a pawn, let's say. All right, let's go back to the full-size board. All right, so knight f3, and now we're attacking this pawn. Well, black can't just go around giving you pawns. For instance, if your opponent plays knight e7 here, the right move is thanks for the pawn. Yeah, you don't want to move pieces twice in the opening, but if you can win a pawn for nothing, then it's well worth it. So knight takes e5 would be the right move to punish black's move knight e7. Black doesn't want you to take that pawn. So therefore, black needs to save it. Well, he, there's five ways to save a piece. You can move it, you can guard it, you can block the attack, you can counterattack, or you could, um, now I have to remember them myself, block, counterattack, 
move out of the way. Uh, oh, capture the attacking piece. That's the fifth one. Well, you can't capture the knight here. That's out. You can't block a knight's attack because knights just jump to the squares. You can only block a bishop, a queen, or a rook from a distance. Um, there's not there's not a great counterattack here, but there is a good one. Knight f6 is called the Petrov's defense, counterattacking the pawn. And it's well known that if white takes the pawn, black cannot take back right away. If he does, white plays queen e2. I won't go into that in any great detail, but black should play d6, drive the knight away, and now he could take the pawn. So there is a counterattack to this. And the most common move is to guard it. Well, there's lots of ways to guard it. A lot of beginners play d6. That's not a great way to guard it because it blocks in the bishop. That's called Philidor's defense. If you like to play Philidor's defense, okay. And if you're white and your opponent plays that move, the number one move to play here is to play d4 and attack the pawn and make him do something about it again. But in order to get toward the fried liver attack, black needs to play the two knights defense. And in order to play two knights defense, white has to play the Italian opening. Well, how do we get into the Italian opening? Black has to play knight c6, the most common move, guarding the pawn. And clearly now white can't take the pawn. Well, he can, it's legal. But he would give up a knight for a pawn. That's not good. Losing material, so he's not going to do that. All right, so the most common move here for the last century has been bishop to b5 or Lopez. But lately, the grandmasters have been playing the Italian game. The Italian game is a typical also good opening for beginners, which is bishop c4. Bishop c4 keeps pressure on that f7 pawn, as we'll see. That makes some difference here in the fried liver attack. But bishop c4 has a name, and we call this opening where both sides play these moves, we call this the Italian game. Now, if black doesn't play these exact moves, it's not the Italian game. For instance, if you play e4 and he plays c5, Sicilian, and you play knight f3 and he plays knight c6, and now you play bishop c4, the pieces aren't all on the same squares, at least blacks are not. So this is just the high school attack against the uh, Sicilian defense. But if you play e4 and he plays e5, and you play knight f3 and he plays knight c6 and you play bishop c4, this is Italian game. And the two main defenses to the Italian game are the Gioco Piano, bishop to c5, and knight f6, the two knights defense. Everything else is pretty rare. Most grandmasters here play the Gioco Piano for black. They play bishop to c5. But there's nothing wrong with playing the two knights defense, knight to f6. Okay, so they call it the two knights defense. Hmm, we wonder why they call it the two knights defense. Okay. So what can white play against the two knights defense? Well, these days when grandmasters play against the two knights defense, a lot of times they simply guard this pawn with d3. And then later they play c3 and castle. And they expect black to play bishop c5 and transpose into the same kind of position you would get with the Joko piano. But in the old days, there was two main lines. The secondary line is to play d4. So if you play d4, you're attacking black center and uh, perfectly good way to play it. But the classical way to play it is the beginner's threat to f7, which is to play knight to g5. Now, if you're a beginner and you don't know knight to g5 is g as a book move, then I would advise you not to move pieces twice in the opening to make threats that can be met. And after knight g5, black can meet the threat to, to f7. But if you know that knight g5 is the book line, then you're not violating any principle about moving every piece a piece twice in the opening because those principles don't apply to book moves. And knight to g5 is a book move here. So let's take a look at knight to g5. Now, some people call knight g5. Uh, I've had several beginning students say, knight g5, oh, that's the fried liver attack. And the answer is, no, it's not the fried liver attack. The fried liver attack comes later if black makes a mistake. That's just the main line in the classical variation of the two knights defense. So now black white has a threat. He's threatening to play knight takes f7, forking the queen and the rook. Suppose black makes the beginner move like h6. 
White says, okay, I'll be glad to move the knight. Knight takes f7, threatens the queen, threatens the rook, wins the pawn, not good. White's also threatening in some lines to play bishop takes f7 check and, stop, and win a pawn and stop black from castling. So again, if black does nothing, probably the best move is knight takes f7, but bishop takes f7 check is also pretty good for white. So black has to do something about that. What can he do? Well, he can't guard the pawn. The only piece on the board that can guard the pawn right now is the queen. And unfortunately, the counting on f7 tells us that queen there doesn't work. For instance, here, white can still play bishop takes f7 check. And now clearly queen takes f7 doesn't work. Knight takes, king takes. And white has taken off a queen and a pawn, and black has only taken off a knight and a bishop. And a knight and a bishop are worth, you know, if they're worth three and a half each, that's seven. The queen is worth about 10. Queen and a pawn, 10 is 11. 11 to seven, if you're using Reinfeld values, a knight and a bishop is three. Queen is nine, a pawn is one. It's still only six to 10. So black can't do that. That means that queen e7, while it theoretically guards the pawn, it doesn't do any good in guarding the pawn because white can take that pawn anyway. So if someone does play queen e7, Stockfish suggests don't play knight takes because he can play d5 hitting the bishop and removing the guard on the knight and black is not as bad a shape. What white should do is play bishop checks, force the black king to go to d8. That's the only other move besides queen takes. And now simply move your bishop all the way back here where it's guarded. And now black can't castle. White is threatening, knight f7 check. White is one a pawn, and black's pretty lost here. Okay, so queen e7 is not the right defense. Now there is a counterattack you can play in this position, and the counterattack is called the Traxler counterattack, or else known as the Wilkes Barrow variation, which is bishop c5. And we're not going to go into this in the video today, but I spent about two years of my life analyzing this with a computer about 20 years ago. And I, I came out with a book on this, which if, I had pre if it was a printed book, it would have been about a thousand pages long. It was the computer analyzes the Traxler. And this CD was, uh, you know, used all around the world. Uh, we had a lot of discussion about it in New and Chess yearbook. Um, it, at the time, it was kind of the state of the art for the Traxler. Today, the computers are even better. So my CD, which is still really interesting and was a lot of hard work, uh, is now kind of precluded by modern computer analysis as the engines get even better. But the Traxler counterattack is a move and it's very, very tricky. For instance, after knight takes f7, black can play bishop takes f2 check. If the king takes the bishop, knight takes check. And now if the king comes out, Black will save his queen with like queen h4. And even though black has lost the bishop and his rook is attacked, the white king is in the middle of the board and black has some good counterattacking chances. Let's go back and do that again. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, knight at g5, bishop c5, knight f7. Bishop takes f2 check. White doesn't have to take. He can play king f1. King takes f2. Knight checks. If black goes back with the king, then again, queen h4, threatening queen f2 checkmate. Gives black some counterattacking chances. But we're not going to talk about the day. We're going to talk about the fried liver attack. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. Bishop c4, knight f6, knight g5. What's the only other way to block this attack? It's to play d5, and most people figure that out. And they play d5, and now white should take with the pawn and attack the knight. This is where beginners go wrong. Up to here, they do fine. So if we go back in time to my third tournament, I was playing black in, a, in this position, and I thought, well, I have to take the pawn back. I can't take it with the queen. I can only take it with a knight, and I made the famous mistake, knight takes d5. Everybody seems to fall into this. That's why it's a trap. It's the most natural move on the board to take your pawn back. It seems like everything's safe. Your queen is attacking the knight on g5. 
But actually, knight takes d5 is a famous mistake. If we give the engine this position, we ask it, what are the best moves? I think knight takes d5 is no more than the fourth best move. And not only that, but as the fourth best move, it's not even close to the best move. The best move here is knight to a5. And we're not doing a video on the main line of the two knights defense. But knight a5 is the main line of the two knights defense. It's not the kind of move that beginners find over the board. Nobody plays this move until they look it up in a book. But once they give it to an engine or they look it up in a database or a book, everybody starts to realize, oh, this is the move. And in fact, knight a5 is effective enough that, you know, players playing black here are not worried about playing the two knights defense in this line. Knight a5 gives black a perfectly playable game. All right, let's go back to that again. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4 is Italian game. Knight f6 is the two knights defense. Knight g5 is not the fried liver attack. It's simply the main line of the classical variation of the two knights defense. d5 blocking the line to this pawn so that the knight can't take. If the knight takes now, the king just takes. And that's not good for that's not good for white. So white takes the pawn. And now instead of the right move, knight a5. Black makes a mistake, and he plays the, you could call it a blunder, you could call it inaccurate. It's not a good move. Knight takes d5. And now white has two moves that are both good for white. I've used the computer to analyze them both extensively over the years. I wrote a whole book on this again, uh, another electronic book, another ebook on the fried liver versus lolly here. And d4 is called the lolly l-o-l-l-i and it's a good move uh white gets a very good position playing the lolly you can see down here let's show you what the computer analysis is the computer analysis is the white is better by 1.3 1.2 that's a really big lead okay so the lolly is good for white but we're not doing the lolly today the other move the white plays, and people like to play the other move more often. If for no other reason than they like to sacrifice the piece right away, and they like the name fried liver attack, so they play the famous fried liver attack, which is knight takes f7. This position, this move, is the fried liver attack. Up to now, we've been in the two knights defense. Black's made the blunder, knight takes d5. White can now punish him with either the lolly or the fried liver, but knight takes f7 is the fried liver. And if we give, if you look at the engine, what it says here, you can see the engine says that white is better. And in fact, it's very tricky point, but it's only 0.4. So Stockfish actually thinks that Stockfish 12, which is rated, you know, over 3,500, thinks that the lolly is superior to the fried liver. But most people still play the fried liver. So if you want to learn the lolly, you can look it up in a book. You can use an engine. Uh, that's not what today's video is on. We're on the fried liver. So knight takes f7. We can see that white is better. White's going to get a fun, good attack, the fried liver attack. But that doesn't necessarily mean the fried liver attack, knight takes f7, is the best move. So let's go back and do it again. It's always good to repeat things so you can learn them. You want to get them into your brain. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. We're going to look at the tabia of the Fried liver attack, bishop to c4, knight f6, knight to g5, d5, e takes d5, knight takes d5, probably question mark, knight takes f7, fried liver attack. There it is, right there. Well, if black doesn't do anything here, and he just saves his queen, and he plays like queen to d7, well, that's crazy. Then white's just winning a pawn and the, and the rook. The knight might get trapped, but black's dead lost. So black has to take the knight. King takes f7 is absolutely forced. And now the right move for white is to play queen f3 check, double attacking the knight and the king. Now here again, beginners go wrong. They figure, oh my goodness, I can't bring my king up to the middle of the board. I'll get like checkmated. So they bring their king back to where they think it's safe. Well, talk about getting checkmated. This is it. Now what I'd like to do is checkmate him, not with the queen, but with the bishop. So I'm going to play queen takes d5 check. Well, black has to get out of check. If he 
plays bishop e6, queen takes e6 is mate. So he could play queen takes d5, bishop takes d5 check, bishop e6, only legal move on the board, bishop takes e6, check mate. So actually, moving the king back, especially to g8, which looks like it's, quote, safer, is actually much, much less safe. Let's do that again in slow motion and instant replay. Why can't you move the king back in the fried liver attack? Bishop c4, knight f6, knight g5, d5, e takes d5, knight takes d5, question mark, knight takes f7, king takes, queen checks. King back, bad mistake, check. I'd rather mate with the bishop than the queen, it's a little prettier. Checkmate. Okay, let's go back. So, the right move, he could move his king back to e8, but then we just take off the knight and we threaten mate and we threaten to take the knight. And again, this is silly. Black is just giving him stuff. So the right move for black is to guard the knight so you don't just lose it. It's to play king to e6. And now white has a pinned knight and he's got a king on the board, but he's down a knight. So it's still a game. So white now adds more pressure to the knight and he plays knight to c3. And now black needs to guard the knight. Well, there's only two ways to do it. He either has to play knight on six to b4 or knight on six, or sorry, knight to b4 or knight to e7. Again, beginners think that knight e7 is the right move, but let's show you that it's not. Again, let's bring our stockfish in here. Stockfish, best move, knight to b4. There was an old line where you play knight to d4. That's not so good. If you play knight e7, we don't have time to go through all the theory of the... But white just plays d4 and blasts the center open. If black says, hey, that pawn's not guarded, I'll take it. White can now play knight takes d5, saving his knight by trading it off. Knight takes. Queen e4 check. And now if black continues to try to guard the knight, the queen won't be guarding it. So now the king is removed from guarding the knight, and black's in big trouble. Let's go back and do this again. Let's make the board bigger again. Take away the computer analysis. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, two knights defense, knight g5, classical variation, d5, main line, e takes d5, main line, knight a5 is main line, knight takes d5, question mark, knight takes f7, King takes f7. Basically, black has fallen into sort of a trap here. Queen f3 check. King e6. Knight c3. So the main line for black is not to play knight e7 and allow d4, but to play knight to b4. Okay, so this move has been known for, you know, 150 years or so. And when I was learning the two knights defense, the move that I was taught to play here was to play a3 to remove the guard. And then after knight takes c2 check, king to d1, I was taught you can't take the rook, you have to play knight d4 and give back the piece. But as you, as you could see here, if I show you Stockfish's line, taking the rook is very, very dangerous, but actually it's not completely terrible. In fact, Stockfish at 30 ply thinks that black should take that rook. So these days, thanks to computer analysis, people don't play a3 anymore. Rather than trying to remove the guard, now the other old move was queen e4 guarding the pawn. About a dozen years ago, the many-time U.S. correspondence champion, John Edwards, wrote an article for Chess Life on this position, and he claimed that Castles was probably winning for white. Now, once white castles, that gives black the time to guard the knight again with c6 so that if white plays a3 to remove the guard, the knight will be guarded. And now white should play something like d4 with a good attack. But as you can see from the evaluation, it's only ahead for white by about 0.3. Does he have anything better than d4? Eh, not really. So d4 with white ahead by about 0.3. Again, white has a good attack. It's a fun attack to play, but if black understands this and knows the kind of moves to play here, for instance here, queen f6 to try to trade queens while black's up a piece, then white's business is not so easy here. 
So a better move probably than John Edwards castles, let's go back to that position, is to play bishop to b3. Okay, let's go back and let's play this out again. Main line, fried liver attack. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, guarding the pawn. Bishop c4, developing the bishop so you can castle. Knight f6, now you can't castle because black's attacking your pawn. So there's a nice slow way to save it is to play d3. You do not want to play knight c3, common beginner mistake. Why? Black can play knight takes e4. Doesn't that just lose a knight? No, it doesn't because if white takes it, black plays a pawn fork of the bishop and the knight. This is called the center fork trick. And that's good for black. So after knight f6, the main line we saw is knight g5. d5 to save the f7 pawn. Pawn takes. Knight takes is a mistake. Knight takes f7, maybe not the best move, maybe the best move. Computers are still working on it, but it is the fried liver attack now. King takes f7, queen checks. The king has to come up and guard a knight. We already saw what happens if he tries to go back and just give him the knight. Then white's just winning. White puts pressure on the pin knight. Going back with the knight is too passive, blocking in your bishop. The aggressive knight on... Knight to b4 is correct, and now Stockfish says the best move is probably bishop to b3. We could stop here and say this is the tabia of the fried liver attack. Tabia are the standard opening moves. Are were we done with the book analysis? No, but if we went further here, this would be well past the beginner stage. Most beginners already have their heads spinning on the analysis here, but here white has a good attack. Maybe not as good as he has in the lolly, but black's gonna play a move like c6. Why? Because white's threatening to play a3, removing the guard on the knight. And now the knight has to go back to a6. So this is like a standard position. Let's do it one more time, just to show you. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, that's called the Italian game. Knight f6, that's the two knights defense against the Italian game. Knight g5, an aggressive book move to try to take advantage of this weak f7 square. d5, blocking the bishop so that white can't take on f7. Pawn takes. And now if you're black, please don't play this move. Knight takes d5. Unless you're doing it on purpose just to have some fun. Learn the main line, knight to a5. Knight takes d5. Here we saw the computer already likes the lolly, d4. But most people don't play the lolly. They play the fried liver attack. Knight takes f7. King takes f7. Queen checks, double attacking the knight and the king. King has to come up and guard the knight. White adds pressure. Black counterattacks the c2 pawn and guards the knight. And now probably the best move is just bishop to b3. Guarding the pawn, threatening to play a3. For instance, if black does nothing here, if he plays bishop c5, then, well, white can certainly castle here, but he can also play a3. And if black moves the knight back, then white gets to win this knight and wins the game. So actually the computer says a3 is inaccurate because of rook f8, but we're getting ahead of ourselves here. So black really has to defend against a3, even though he could counterattack and white would have to be a little careful, but the right move, the main move is to play c6, so the knight is now guarded by a pawn. And now after a3, knight a6. Okay, so this is the fried liver attack. Okay, so if you're black, don't play into the fried liver attack. If you're white and your opponent blunders into this in the Italian game, two knights defense, and you want to play the fried liver attack, go get him. Very often, black defends poorly and white wins quickly. If you want to learn something else besides the fried liver attack against knight takes d5, you can also learn d4 the lolly, which the computer thinks is the number one move. Okay, so if you liked the video today, please give us a like. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. But more importantly, tell your friends about the channel. The more people, the merrier. And hopefully you enjoyed today's video, and we'll see you next time. Bye.